Hi guys, welcome to the video. We've already had one disaster today. I know this is a weird angle, but I wanted to get the plant in. Um, I've just pulled my, I wanted to move my varicose and from there to where it is there, like pulled it and it's really, um, basically it's wedged to keep the stem in the right position, otherwise it just like flops everywhere and we've already had soil all over the floor. Um, ironically, um, it's going to be like a chatty video, but I'm going to clean my plants whilst I'm here. I'm really hoping that the camera can't pick up how, oh god it really can, vile this ZZ plant is. My ZZ plant has a hard life. So it lives in my bathroom and it is so dusty. It's actually covered in like splatters of toothpaste because I've got an electric toothbrush, um, which sprays toothpaste everywhere. So I'm just going to sit and clean it. It's actually not grown in... I don't think it's grown at all this year. Like these stems have grown, but it's not had any more babies that I can see. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna give it a clean. This is just, what is it? It's water and very liquid, but the bottle I used to use for peppermint oil. I've heard that peppermint deters pests. I know it deters mice, but like it starts, it, like it's been empty for months and it still smells really strongly of peppermint but I don't think it'll hurt your plants I think it'll be a bit harsh but actual peppermint oil but this is just like the remnants um no I want a mist there we go um so I'm just spraying it there's no like insecticide or anything in it I would normally recommend putting neem oil in I do have neem oil uh, I just couldn't be bothered. So I'm just going to spray it down and then wipe the leaves. Um, somebody, so I've got an article on my website about my favourite plant YouTubers. And somebody commented, so this is just like a microfiber cloth, like a really cheap one. And, um, do you know, as I'm doing this, I probably would recommend not spraying it all at once because it's quite difficult to see which ones you've cleaned. Oh, oh. this is gross. I wouldn't care, like this lives in my bathroom and I could just spray it multiple times a week, I just never do. Poor thing. I think I might actually keep it in here. The light's better. Now ZZ plants aren't fussed about light, really. I mean they've got a really thick, they're really like waxy and they've got thick stems and thick leaves. They're really not that fussed but I think it will probably like some TLC. Like it doesn't get great light in the bathroom, it gets, like the light is fine in there. But the fact it's covered in dust um, will really, really like stop the light getting through to it. So I'm hoping like a bit of warmth in here. I just need to really keep an eye out for any signs of pests because they'll spread like wildfire in here. I think it's okay. Oh. Anyway, so somebody left a uh, comment on my website, on my article, saying, telling me to check out Hakuna La Planta. Great name. And so that's what I was doing all weekend. And he's brilliant. He's in Toronto. And it's so like he's really, really good. Um, but his humidity is 27%, which I thought was really interesting. Also, it was minus 20 degrees Celsius, which is, I think, minus four Fahrenheit, you said. Is that right? Is it the other way around? I have no idea about Fahrenheit. Anyway, it's pretty cold. And his plant, obviously like the heating was on in his house, but 27% humidity and he had loads of like philodendrons and he said his anthurium suffered, but his plants all looked fine. And I'm like, I'm guessing, like what he said was that because his care was on point, like they were warm, they had a lot of light and he was feeding them, the humidity, like the increased humidity would have been beneficial but because the other care was fine, um, the humidity was less of an issue. So here, many of my plants are still alive because it's quite warm in here. They get decent light and um, it's quite humid. It's generally about, hang on. It's either 53, or 55 could be could it be 56 yeah I'm missing two of the little so we've, 
these humidifier things are brilliant. Uh, just a hygrometer that measures the humidity. But we put it in, it was in the terrarium and it got up to 94%, which was too humid for this. And it got wet and died. Made a recovery. Uh, oh, 16 degrees, Julie. Um, but yeah. But yeah, I think the fact that everything is fine here apart from me, uh, so you know they have to go wild without water, is how so many of my plants manage to stay alive. Like some of them, like the two, these two, the I mean, everybody is growing at the moment. My monstera, which has just put out a new leaf, is putting out another one. Um, oh, that Hakuna La Planta guy also said that he had he was struggling to get his Thai constellation to grow. And it seems to be the same issue that I had. Once they start growing, they're fine, but it just takes them a little bit to keep going. All I'm doing here is like, bunching the dust up. Um, apparently not all microfiber cloths are made equal. I think this, these may not be very good. Are you not gonna wet them? I don't know. But I'm hoping, I'm I think the toothpaste is coming off. The a little bit of TLC. I love this plant, like I just think it's really cool, like big jungle vibes. And it's like sad life in my bathroom is just not good for it. It got mealybugs and I was like gutted because I hate mealybugs because they get right into the crevices and they're really difficult to get rid of. Uh but it doesn't it, they seem to just go, like I treated it a few times. I'm looking longingly at my bin, which is way over there. I'm not gonna, they're not gonna go in there. Um, oh, oh, it's, it, I don't know why I forget to clean this one because I'm not brilliant at cleaning any of them, but I do, you know, every few months I will kind of pass a cloth over them. But there's just something about this, where it is that I, just, I see it multiple times a day and yet I just never think to clean it. That is, oh, it's like all, it's, it's horrible. I think what I'm gonna do is leave it like this and then when I'm in the shower tonight, I will um, pull it off the side of the bath and I will shower it. So you're done. Right, this rubber tree looks just as dusty as a ZZ plant, but I've, Clean this thing. What is that? I have no idea. I clean this thing all the time. All the time. But because the leaves are like, they often sit like flat. So this top one isn't very dusty because it's like vertical. Oh, that is a nice leaf. The, it grew a lot this summer. It put out like one, two, three, four, six leaves. And it's just looking really good. I'm sorry if you can't see me. Right, no. Like when you're cleaning, start at the top and work down. I'm just, I'm just talking to myself here. You're, you just happen to be here. But it makes sense, like, because the dust will fall down onto the lower leaves. Whereas if you go up, the dust will, the dust is gonna fall down, so you better have to start at the top. So I skipped out my hour of plant care this week. That's why I'm doing it now whilst um, I'm filming because I went for a run and then it was a really nice day. So my boyfriend was like, oh, I'll go for a walk. So I didn't want to do it. And then when he came back, he was gonna clean out his fish tank. And I was like, perfect. I will, I'll use the water um, when you clean the fish tank. And he was cleaning out the filter, which is just full of fish poo. And I was like, perfect, because that will do was like fertilizer water. And then I thought, well, I'll just wait until he does that to do the plant care, because he was gonna do that on Monday. But then when, what was I doing? Where was I? I was working all day. I wanted to get all my work done. I normally do my, my blog on a Monday and a Tuesday, but I wanted to get it all done on Monday. So that today I could film, do meal prep, and most importantly, have a nap. So I just worked solidly all day yesterday. Didn't get my plant care done. And then, yeah, and then I was gonna like water today. Then I was like, next I watered last week, it's winter. I'm gonna end up overwatering them. So I've now got a bottle full of uh, watery fish poo. So that's exciting stuff. So yeah, 
for that swore clean is I'm also like checking for pests because I know I've seen like a few thrips on the um what's it called variegated rubber plant I said in my bug video this just doesn't seem to get pests it's actually got a new leaf coming you can't see you can't there don't touch it and it seems perfectly fine like it really really needs repotting the roots are starting to come through a bit but like it's not a the 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 roots aren't coming at the bottom but i know the pot is full of roots i think this could do with going up a couple of pot sizes i wouldn't normally recommend doing that but i only unpotted it like a couple of pot sizes like one pot size last time and it grew roots immediately and just filled it so i think we're gonna go up a couple of pot sizes next time right next i'm gonna do my dragon at scale alocasia this is not looking great it's not over watering it's a combination of thrips that it got from the variegated alocasia no variegated rubber plant and it's over a radiator um, so I'm just going to clean it off. I can't see many thrips. Alocasia are such a weird one when it, when it comes to pests. Sometimes they can have them for ages and they don't really seem to impact them that much. I'm just going to spray it down. I wanted a fine mist guys, what the hell is this? Um, and... But this one, it had thrips before and they didn't really have that much of an impact for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then all of a sudden it looked really shabby. And I believe it's because the thrips lay the eggs in the leaf. And maybe they were starting to emerge and damage in the leaf or, you know, something like that. I can't see any baby ones on here. And like, I could move it away from the variegated rubber plant, but I don't want it to spread to other plants. So we shall see. Like the variegated rubber plant is dealing very well with the thrips. The top leaves, you, would, you wouldn't even know there's anything wrong with it. It's just here. You can see all the damage on the back. So don't, if you're checking your plants for pests, check them all. Don't wait for them to look like they've got pests because sometimes they don't show it. And once you've cleaned the plant with pests on, make sure that you change the cloth um, before you use it on other plants because that is a really really good way to spread them uh, a lot of people use like kitchen towel what do, what do americans call it i have no idea paper towel <laughs> paper towels we we call paper towels something different like paper towels are a different thing here uh, exclusively used in primary schools but um uh i don't use i try not to use disposable things if I don't need to. So I just use, I just have like millions of microfiber cloths. So this damage is thrips damage, but to be honest, spider mite damage often looks similar. Um, this like mottly spotty black mark, just generally like the leaves just look sad and floppy. Whereas here, like the other leaves are all sort of supporting themselves interestingly i don't know if this is interesting it's interesting to me this is the only plant i've known that the thrips go on the lower leaves not the newer leaves i can only think it's because when they're younger they are like so none of these leaves are particularly new, like brand new they've all hardened off and the new leaf has so there's a new leaf coming there They've got quite a thick caterpillar on them. Like when the caterpillar comes off a rubber plant, it doesn't disintegrate. It's quite a sort of a solid thing. I can only think it, it's too hard for them to get through. They prefer the older leaves. Um, thrips really seem to know what they're doing when it comes to plants. I mean, I know that they do because that's what they do, but ignore that. I've only found one adult so far. didn't know I was coming like I, there was loads the other day and I picked them all off I think they're like lulling me into a false sense of purity like yeah you picked us all we've all gone 
don't need to worry about those anymore. Does not work like that with thrips. Basically, once a plant has thrips, you just have to check it for the rest of its life. I'm just wiping the same leaves over and over again. Uh, I'm also going to do my big monstera because why not? I'm just doing big leaves. Oh, uh, I don't want to do my varicosum because it's quite velvety and it's not that dusty. I, I don't like wetting them. I don't know why because when my velvet touch had um, spider mites I used to like shower it all the time and it really did not care. Turn you around. Have you seen this? And it's putting out a new leaf. You can just see a new stem coming. Get off the camera. All right. This leaf is looking terrible. So I'm going to get rid of it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't normally do that because this, like, if a leaf has green on it, it's still photosynthesizing. But when they've got pests, yeah. There was a very real chance there's thrips and spider mites on this. I have no idea if you'll see that. There's like loads of bugs. <sighs> is that spider mites or is it? Yeah, I think it's spider mites. I like I think spider mites are easier to get rid of than thrips but I don't like them I don't like thrips but I don't know they've got like this nothing what's that fucking thrips I don't know if that's showing up it's there can you see him walking around Very big. Yeah, it is. I can't see any signs of spider mites on any of the other leaves, which is interesting, but I can see signs of spiders. So I'm wondering if maybe a spider's come in, has moved in. I was going to get a moss pole for this, but oh, touching the new leaf, the new growth. Um, what I've done is I've just trained the aerial roots to go back in and that's supporting it fine at the moment. So uh, I'm not going to bother with that. That was another thing that I really liked about the uh, Hakuna La Planta. He, his moss poles were just like his plant supports were just bamboo canes zip tied together like his use of zip ties i thought was um inspiring so i uh, yeah i really liked it i like, highly recommend i don't think this has not got an infestation this has just got like a few thrips and that's quite standard for monstera there's just something about them oh it is dusty though that thrips really seem to like Um, I don't really want to do too much to this one because it's new. It has already got like a little rip in it. Like a lot of my plants had, oh this is horrible, <laughs> had quite a hard time last year because I didn't look after them properly. So um, I I've got a lot of like this kind of situation going on. Philodendron, what a useful tag. Just says water once a week. MPK, 
just as MPK, like, um, no numbers, just fertilise it once a month and don't eat it. Also, uh, uh, what looks to be a um, no sun, no sun, it will die type thing. Well, so this is incredibly dusty. It seems to be healthy. I can't see any bugs on it. I think sometimes, no thrips, no. I think sometimes they're so dusty that even the pests are horrified. This is one of those plants. It keeps, it goes up and downhill and then it, once it goes uphill, it does too much. So rather than growing one leaf like a normal person, we've got a little growth point here, a growth point at the top here, and then there's something else going on at the back. If you look where that growth point is, there's another one just above it, where my pupil is. <laughs> and I'm like, you do it, just do one leap, just one at a time, you know? But um, he says no, so it's getting sprayed. My cloth. So let me know how your plant care is going. Um, I won't lie, I'm already quite bored of it. And I'm only doing an hour a week. I'm actually cut it down to half an hour because I, if I get bored doing it for an hour and I force myself, then I'll end up not wanting to at all. So uh, I'll just cut it down. Um, mm. Oh, you're dusty. I don't learn. I do not learn, but we're not using the thrip cloth. Do I have another cloth? I must have something I can use to wipe a plant. I'm going to use my sleeve and none of you are going to judge me. This, ah, oh, this plant just looks really bare there, but it's not. It's just really taken off this winter. I think this is a candidate for uh, being grown up at a plank. I'm interested to see. I love pothos. I love plants that have, oh, I was using my sleeves, that was it. Oh no, I've got a microfiber towel here. This is a, <laughs> this is a fancy hair turban, which I'm now gonna use to wipe my plant leaves. Oh, that works really well. Oh, it's definitely a quality thing of microfiber. Oh yeah. Yeah, use, <laughs> Use an aqueous hair towel. Beautiful. I think my issue is, and I know a lot of you will understand where I'm coming from here, I just have too many plants. I have too many and not enough. I, I, I flew too close to the sun. Too high, too fast. And now I've got a load of plants to look after. I love how like there's all so the leaves are getting bigger and bigger and all the new growth. Apart from I've got one vine here that's just like I'm just gonna do little ones. Just just little ones. And I like that. I think it's cute. I've got like one, two. Ah, right. So a while ago. Oh, it's already doing it. So I was saying with the Monstera Adansonii, and I've done it with the Golden Pothos, when you end up with like a really, like just a, a vine, if you lie it on top of the soil, so it's got contact with the soil and keep it moist, it will root. I've actually got that starting to happen. I will not be able to show you. Can you see there's like really long roots? Like there, that's a root that my thumb's on now. There, there's one. Uh, so that, I've just laid it, because it, if I lay it like normally, it just hangs over the side, which does look good. But if I get that rooting in the soil, oh, it's because there's two, there's two, and they're all crossing over. You can, if you sort of manipulate them, physically, not mentally, when they're young, you can make them fuller without having to like chop and prop all the time. You can sort of just get them to root 
multiple nodes from one vine and then that will create multiple growth points. Sometimes, sometimes they're like, no, I'm only growing one leaf at a time. There's not really a lot you can do about it. Ideally, I would have this one growing over this way and then that will cover that bald spot. I'm not very good at plant arranging. That sort of got rid of the bald spot. But then I also think the reason it was growing so well was because it was all growing together. Like, it was all getting there. It was, it had grown towards the light, so we'll see. We'll see. I'll just leave it like that. It doesn't look as full. Can't have everything. Right, I think I've waffled on enough, enough um, and shared my thrips with you all. Um, now I'm going to check the other plants. I don't think any of the others have got it. Uh, and I'll just I'll just create so I've got a Hoya Kerii next to the Dragon Scale Alocasia. There is a Hoya Bella above it. Hoya Bella and Thrips, mm, it will go to them. They will go to it, but they're not like if there was a Calathea, they'd be like, yeah, we need to be there, but they're not so bothered about the Hoya Bella. They really don't like the Hoya Kerii, it's too thick. But I've got a pink princess next to that, which is throwing out another leaf. So I might have to swap that around with a ponytail palm, just create a bit of a buffer. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye.